Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FPL Now. Today we're going to be going over a Game Week 32 wildcard draft. So if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Leave a comment. What are you doing with your team this week? Subscribe if you're brand new. Let's get into the video. So starting things off, this is my wildcard draft for Game Week 30. Two. Now, of course, we did just get the double game week announcements for game week 36, game week 37. So a lot of these players are put into this squad because of those doubles, especially Leicester players as well, who double in 36 and 37 and 33. So, yeah, a lot of people are kind of thinking of bringing in Leicester players um, very, very soon. But, of course, the only problem with that, they have a lot of European games as well sandwiched in between all of the Premier League fixtures. So there is going to be heavy rotation. So the likes of Barnes, Madison potentially could be get rested, uh, could get rested in some of those games. Schmeichel. I think is probably the best option to have in any kind of team if you're attacking those uh, Leicester players just because he's going to play every single game he's a goalkeeper he's nailed so you don't have to worry about that but anyway in goal we do have Foster and Schmeichel so of course Foster is just a nice uh, playing goalkeeper 4.1 I know Watford can't seem to keep a clean sheet to save their lives but just a nice option if anything does happen to Schmeichel at some point in the season as well as that they do double in game week 36 as well of course uh, Crystal Palace and Everton two okay fixtures I mean Crystal Palace of course playing really good football at the moment but Everton might be able to get something from that game but yeah Schmeichel is going to be a main keeper and as I did say they do blank uh well they don't blank they double in 33 as you can see they have Newcastle and Everton in 33 and then in 36 they have Everton and Norwich that's a really really nice double there especially both of them being home games and then as well in 37 they have Watford and Chelsea and as well as that, they just have nice fixtures as well across the board. So I don't think there's anything wrong really bringing in Leicester players. But of course, the only kind of issue is the rotation risks. Um, but we're going to have that with a lot of the teams anyway. Your likes of your Cities, your Liverpools, your Chelsea's. You know, the fact that these teams do have European games as well as a title race. Um, there is going to be a lot of rotation. So we'll have to see what happens. It could just be the case where, you know, a lot of the players start but then come off on like the 60th minute. We did see the likes of Salah come off last night early. Um, so, yeah, I think that's just going to happen a lot more throughout the, uh, the the remainder of the season. At the back, though, we have White um, instead of Tierney because Tierney is out pretty much for the rest of the season. You could have Ramsdale in this team as well if you wanted to. I just think that if you do want to bring in a less player, Schmeichel is the best option. As I say, he's not going to get rotated. And instead of Ramsdale, you brought in Ben White who is a really nice option. I think he's 4.6 now. I think he actually got a price rise. They do double in 33 and 36. Taney's out for the rest of the season. White, I think, is the only... Uh, I mean, he's just the best option. He's cheap. He's nailed. He's going to play 90 every game. Um, and Arsenal, I know they did have that hiccup against Palace, um, but I think that he's still one of the better uh, options to have just because of how cheap he is. At the back, we have Cancelo, Trent, James, and Doherty as well. Um, so there are a couple of things you could do with your back line. Um, of course, Chelsea do double in 36 and City don't. But I mean, City's fixtures are just so, so good for the remainder of the season. And they do, of course, still have the Wolves game as well to uh, put somewhere. But I mean, if you did want to double up on like Cancelo and Laporte instead of like James, then that could potentially be an option. James did get rested in the last game. I know he came off the bench. Um, but I mean, I think James is pretty much just going to be saved for the European games. They've got some tough games against Real Madrid coming up. Um, and I think James is going to need to be fit and ready for those because again, he is one of their most attacking players down that right flank. Uh, I've got Trent as well. I mean, Trent or Robertson are both really, really good options. I just, I don't know, not owning Trent, I feel like is just criminal um in in fpl in the, this day and age but again a lot of people are opting for robertson he is playing really really well um but i mean i mean did you see trent's performance last night in the champions league those some of those balls it was pinging were just ridiculous uh, and then Doherty as well, uh, again, does double in 36. And I don't think he's going to lose his place now. You know, he obviously scored and got an assist um, against Newcastle in that last game. I can't see him losing his spot. And again, they've just got really, really nice fixtures towards the end of the season. They do double in 36. Obviously, it's not a great double away at Liverpool and then also the North London derby. Um, but apart from that, just green fixtures all over the place for um, Spurs. And obviously, the likes of uh, Regulon as well, a little bit more injury prone. Doherty, I think, is just the best kind of Spurs defender to have into your team if you are going to bring in one. In midfield, we do have Saka, Madison, Kulisevsky, Salah, and Eriksson. Eriksson, I mean, he doesn't have any doubles. He is a bit of a punt. He's cheap. He's 5.5. Um, yeah, I've kind of just had a little bit of fun with that. I mean, you could... You could do a couple of different things. You could, instead of having like Broya, you could downgrade someone like Gelhart or something and then use that money to upgrade Ericsson to a, a Gallagher or someone like that. The only problem with bringing in Crystal Palace players is most of their remaining games are away and they've just not got a good away record at all. Crystal Palace play really, really well at home. 
Um, so yeah, if you wanted to bring in Gallagher, you could. On the other side, you could bring in Mateta as well. He is a little bit of an option. He's getting a little bit more game time. Uh, he isn't playing 90, but you know he's 5.2, 5.3, I think. So Mateta could be an option instead of Broly. But anyway, let's go into the midfield. So yeah, Saka, I, I, I don't know. I just think he's one of the better midfielders to have in your team this season. Uh, they do double in 33 and 36. Um, and yeah, Arsenal are still playing for those Champions League positions and they've got nothing else to play for. They're not in any other cups. Um, so yeah, I, I think Arsenal players are very much uh, okay to be bringing in uh, at this point in time. And then Madison again, uh, doubles in 33, 36, 37. But again, high, high, high rotation risks. He's in the form of his life. Um, but again, is he going to need that form for the Euro uh, European games? He most likely will. So yeah, it's going to be tough bringing in Leicester players. They will get rested. Like I... This is why you kind of need a like an okay-ish bench. I know even if you've played your bench boost and stuff, you still kind of need an okay bench because of all the rotation that we are going to have. You know, the likes of City, Liverpool, Leicester. All these different players are going to get rotated. So if you don't have a good bench to kind of come in when they do get rotated, you're kind of shooting yourself in your foot. Um, so it's, it's why it's nice having these, these like cheap players as well, like Ben White, very cheap. Ericsson, cheap for kind of what he's producing. Broyer as well, another cheap option. Uh, but if goal so gone, Kulusevski still tripling up on, um, what do you call it, Spurs. Again, Kulusevski could be somebody else. You could bring in Rafinha if you wanted to. They do blank in 33, but he is a different option if you wanted to bring him in. But yeah, Kulusevski is just cheap. I know this uh, draft doesn't have Sun, and I guess you could go Kane or Sun. I mean, the fact that Spurs scored five and Kane didn't get any of their goals, very, very lucky as non-Kane owners. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Kane is just such a good captaincy option for a lot of these games. Um, and I know the Salah is right there, but again, going to be a lot of rotation. Um, but yeah, also got Salah, obviously, and we've already gone over Ericsson. So yeah, up top, we have Kane, Breuer, and Weghorst. So yeah, Kane, again, already gone over him. Just he, Honestly, that Spurs game was really weird because he played so, so well. Like, he bossed that midfield. Like, honestly, he some of those passes were ridiculous. Um, but at the same time, just only got one assist. I mean, he could have got another assist. Son should have finished. Um, it wasn't like an easy chance, but Son definitely should have put it away. Somebody of his um, like skill and ability, uh, which obviously would have got Kane another assist, but it would also have got Son another five points for the goal. So it is one of those. But uh, yeah, I think Kane and Kulisewski over Son is still probably the way to go. I think Kane owners was just really unlucky in that um, uh, Newcastle game. And then again, yeah, Gombroya as well. Could be a Mateta, could be a Gelhart if you wanted to. Um, they do double in 33, Arsenal and Burnley, and then they don't really do anything for the rest of the season. He's kind of just in there as like a, um, I guess an enabler, but again, he could, he, he's still capable of scoring and stuff. That's the thing. And then we've also gone Veghorst as well. He does, of course, double in 33 um, and doubles in 37 as well, uh, Tottenham and Villa. So... Honestly, I, I don't think there's anything wrong holding Veghorst till the end of the season. You know, the fixtures are okay. They are playing for... They are in a relegation battle, so they do... They will be needing to score more goals. So then maybe they go a little bit more adventurous up top. Um, and, and so Veghorst gets a few more chances. But we'll have to see what happens. Of course, they do play Everton tonight. Um, so we'll have to see what happens in that game. And I think a lot of us are kind of hoping for a bit of a haul from him. Um, because at the moment, he's only bringing in one point. So he yeah, hopefully he does something in that Everton game later. But of course, that is a massive relegation battle. So I think it will be a, a tight game, that is for sure. But yeah, this is kind of one of the wildcard drafts that I just kind of put together. Uh, again, you could put other players in this draft. Of course, you could. But I don't think there's any really weak spots in this draft. I think it's very template. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Of course, a lot of people are going to be wildcarding in 34. A lot of people are three, uh, free hitting in 33, then wildcarding in 34 um, to attack those 36 and 37 fixtures, which of course is an also a very, very good option. Um, but yeah, I don't think this wildcard draft is the worst in the world. And hopefully it will get you a few points uh, for the remainder of the season. But anyway, that is going to be everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 50 likes. Leave a comment. Are you wildcarding this week? Subscribe if you're brand new. It's everything from us though. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, have a good one.